up Montreal eighth in the East, taking on Atlanta United, two teams that went through all kinds of changes over the course of the season, but are still alive on the road to the MLS Cup. Plus 152 if you want to back CF Montreal, plus 185 for Atlanta United. Um, Let's walk through this as Montreal beat New York City FC on the final match day, despite just a 0.7 expected goals on the day, and Joel Waterman playing midfield as Nathan Saliba was out through suspension. Uh, This playoff berth, if you want to call it a wildcard berth, comes after losing 5-0 at home to the Revolution, and then back-to-back, they lost 5-1 at FC Cincinnati at the end of August. After that period of time, that difficult stretch, they went 5-1-1 one, and one the rest of the way to finish 8th. That's 16 points from the 21 available. Uh, 13 goals scored, 6 goals conceded with three, three, uh, 3 clean sheets along the way as well. And all 3 of those clean sheets came at home, which is important as this game will be played at Stade Saputo on Tuesday night. They are four wins from four over that stretch since late August as well. Nine goals scored and just one goal conceded. And they've been the first to score in four of five overall. The team won their last seven matches across all competitions while scoring the opening goal and are unbeaten in 10 consecutive games when scoring the opening goal. A reminder, this team before the transfer window close sent out Matthew Chouanier, had all kinds of criticism as well. Ariel Lassiter, uh, Ruan, and they brought in Caden Clark, who the 21 year old, fresh on returning back home from RB Leipzig, didn't score in 23 games with Minnesota United. Made the move to Montreal. He has four goals, four assists in the nine matches overall. Incredible. He's part of this youth movement. Like this is Sea of Montreal. They stuck to it. Uh, Jaquil Marshall Ruddy, 20. Bryce Duke, 23. Saliba, 20. Fernando Alvarez, 21. And there's been a consistent starting 11 as well in recent weeks, including Joseph Martinez, who looked like he was on the outs with manager Laurent Courtois. They got to a spat midway through the season. Ended up with 11 goals. That was tops on the team for the season. Plays his former team in Atlanta United in this wildcard match and has scored six goals in his last five games, including a brace against Atlanta on October 2nd. In terms of their home form, 8-5-4 and four on the season, 28 goals scored, 23 conceded for Montreal. XG, just about the same, 21, 25.1 to 22.5 in expected goals against. Overall, however, they failed to score in 29% of their games, which was the third worst in terms of that category Major League Soccer. Only Chicago and Nashville were shut out more times. As for Atlanta United, back-to-back 2-1 victories over the Red Bull and Orlando on the final day was good enough to qualify in ninth. After DC United Philly both lost their games, Atlanta 2-3-1 over the last six, 3-3-2 over their last eight. Lovjanadze has been a revelation, and Moranchuk as well since coming in midseason. Both have scored three goals in their last six games. Atlanta, no clean sheet in their last seven. They played to over two and a half in five of six. Both teams to score has played in six of six, and they've been the first to concede in five of seven. Again, Moranchuk was the big addic- uh, addition midseason, but Wiley, Almada, Giacomakis all left this team. This is some big, important players for this Atlanta United team. Still enough to squeak in. They are 2-2-0 in their last four away. Six goals scored, four conceded. Wins at Charlotte and Orlando. Draws at the Red Bull and Philadelphia. Uh, four, six, and seven overall away. 16 goals scored, that's it. And 22 against. But those all-important two goals on the final match day of the season helped them get over the line. Head-to-head Montreal won both games this season. 2-1 away at the beginning of October. And 1-0 away in July. Gregerson, the center back for Atlanta, was sent off in that game shortly after Montreal took the lead in the second half. Atlanta did, however, win 1-0 in Montreal last season. And the reward who, for whoever wins this fixture, they get to face Inter-Miami in the next round of the MLS Cup playoffs. A reminder, uh, no extra time, straight to pens. So when you're betting for the 90, it's what's going to play out in the 90, uh, penalties excluded. All right, boys, uh, time for you two to have your say. That's the backdrop. Bob, we'll start with you. CF Montreal, Atlanta United, What's your read? So I have two official plays on this. One is a team to win, and one is the same team's uh, total at over one and a half goals. 
and it's it's all in the Montreal direction. And seeing this laid out in a graphic doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I think that Montreal should be much, much more heavily favored at home. You know, Atlanta, they barely snuck in the playoffs after DC United collapsed late season. They don't won their last two against Red Bull and Orlando. And while they may seem hot, that was only their only two wins in the last seven matches. They had three draws and two losses in that time. That does represent a change of form for Atlanta because Atlanta was atrocious for a while there in the middle of the season. Uh, Montreal is a much safer home play. Second straight home match compared to Atlanta traveling. So we do have to take that into account being as there's only three days in between these two matches. And Montreal is actually hot. Five wins, one draw, and one loss in their last seven total. And that span, impressively for me, includes scoring twice on NYCFC and scoring twice on Charlotte, two defenses that we consider to be elite in Major League Soccer. Atlanta's got a good defense, but they're not on par with those two teams. Um, you know, the current form here is a result of player availability for Montreal. They don't have anyone on break. They don't have anyone injured. They don't have anyone on international duty. They don't have anyone in Canada, which is nice for a change. And I think that that direct was a direct result of Montreal having a nice little home span and uh, a chance to really separate themselves a little bit from the pack. On the other hand, Atlanta does have availability issues. We're not going <laughs> to know until game time, but Mascara missed last match. Jean de Silva missed last match. Um, and it said Silva was in training uh, alone today, not with team training. Mascara, I got no information on whatsoever. That could be a huge deal. That's two huge offensive pieces for Atlanta United. You know, to, to back up my second pick, over a goal and a half for Montreal. You know, they played each other twice this season, 2-1 Montreal on a road win and a 1-0 Montreal home win. I think this more looks like the match from October 2nd, which saw a 2-1 win for the Canadian side. I have them winning outright, and, you know, the team total number uh, looks pretty good at plus 117, so I'm loving that. And again, Montreal doesn't score a lot, and that's why you're getting a pretty good price here. But I think that, uh, you know, with their backs up against the wall, they're really going to have to beat up on this Atlanta team. They're not looking for a 1-0 win and take it into the weekend. Montreal can score early. They can score often. And I think, you know, Atlanta hasn't had anyone gunning for them this season until this match. This is the first match that anyone has looked at their schedule and said, I need to beat Atlanta United here. For that reason, I'm, I'm predicting a little Caden Clark magic, maybe a little uh, Joseph Martinez revenge game narrative, putting up two, two, three on his old team. Love to see both of those possibilities. I'm taking Montreal and the team total of over one and a half goals. Okay. Um, those are Bob's play. Remember, betustv.com slash odds is where you can find all the odds that we'll be using on today's show. Dan Alexander, have you heard what Bob has had to say? Uh, what angle are you playing here? Yeah, I, I think a great breakdown. I think Bob also underscores the fact that maybe the pricing is telling you a little bit of a story of how this game may shake out, uh, you know, over uh, over the uh, the course of the game here. I mean, I don't I don't quite see it quite the same way as far as, you know, Atlanta finally having a team gunning for them, uh, you know, because honestly, with Montreal, if you're facing a team that you've already beat up on twice, Aren't you saying, hey, let's just roll over this team that we already know and then let's see what we can do against Miami? I mean, this feels like a, a sandwich spot of all sandwich spots. And it's hard to say that when you're heading into the playoffs. You know that's always going to ratchet it up a little bit. But what team am I going to want to see having a little bit more pressure on it? The team that should win, the team who is at home, the team who has already dominated the team uh, that they're going to be across from, or the team that's just like, oh, my God, we're we're playing in the postseason? Like, I'm not thinking that Atlanta is just happy to be here, but I think that there's an element of Atlanta just being able to play their game and whatever happens, happens. And I think the pricing is telling you that. I also think that this game, I'm glad that you mentioned that, um, you know, the, the overtime rules are a little bit different, that you get straight into pens. So you really want to be making sure if you're betting on three-way lines, um, you know exactly what your bet is going to be in this one. So I, I think that's an important distinction for maybe some of the more novice bettors. I think this game kind of has pens written all over it. Now, I'm not going to call my shot and pick a winner in pens, but I think if you look at, uh, if you wanted to get Atlanta getting a half goal so that you could win even if this thing is going to pens, you have to lay minus 190 to do it. So that's why I'm going to look towards the Asian handicap, bring that thing down to a quarter of a goal, and if we're heading to pens, we at least win half of the bet here because I think we got a live dog in Atlanta. It's minus 135 to take that quarter goal. Sprinkle on the money line if you want to. 
too. Uh, but, you know, they finally win back-to-back games for really the first time in forever. It was like a, a dog's age since the last time they've been able to string wins together. So if anybody's playing with some house money, it's them. And in the case of Montreal, yes, the end of the year was impressive. But that 2-0 win against NYCFC is the only real one that I circle and say that's that's a statement kind of impressive quality win in a while. And yes, I know I'm including a 2-1 win against Atlanta, kind of poo-pooing that being a solid win for them. So I was a little bit more impressed by an Atlanta side who was able to jump on Orlando a little bit, show that they aren't just going to coast in to the postseason in a do-or-die situation for them again. Yes, I understand the injury woes. We're not sure who we're getting, but with a litany of outcomes getting all tied in to one potential play with a dog that I think is live, Give me the quarter of a goal on the Asian handicap line, minus 135. It's a little juicier than I like the play, but that's the way that I'm going to attack this one because I can't quite have the cojones to say Atlanta outright, but them forcing it depends. That's an outcome that I could see, and I'll take a half of a cash if that is the, uh, the final outcome, or they do pull the outright upset win, which I think is another potential outcome. Yeah, um, I kind of look at things more the way that – You do, uh, Dan, but I'm not willing to go all the way there. In fairness, I think this game should really be a pick 'em. Um, There's a couple of reasons. Montreal have been playing better, but Atlanta, I I, I was trying to fade them for so long. It just wasn't working. They were competitive down the stretch because this team, unlike so many others, including the team that they're playing, they've got players right in the right age. Like the vast majority of the players between 26 and 29, they're experienced. Their goalkeeper, Brad Guzan, has been good this year. Um, despite some question marks about his play at this latter stage of his career, that kind of leadership in a game like this tells me that game management um, might be all important here. This is very new to basically all of these CF Montreal players, with the exception of Joseph Martinez leading the line. Um, I'm just looking at this as being a KG game. This is just the second year that the wildcard game is being used in Major League Soccer. Last year, we saw the Red Bull smash Charlotte 5-2. That's the anomaly. The other games, San Jose and Sporting Kansas City, they played to a goalless draw. I think we could see a little bit of that playing out here. Midweek fixture, neither team wanting to take risks. Both teams, in fairness, rather risk-adverse, especially Montreal playing in that 3-4-2-1 formation. I mean, they're just not a team that generally comes in waves. And I think Atlanta United, in many ways, is better playing against his counterattack. And I just can't see there being that kind of opportunity where Montreal commits too many players going forward. That's just simply not the way they play. So I, I tried to wait it to, 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 to get the biggest plus number I can on this sucker playing the under. And the best way of doing it is both teams to score no and under two and a half. So give me a 1-0 either way, a 2-0 the other way. By the way, those were the two most common score lines in last year's uh, MLS Cup playoffs as well. Um, And I think that's a decent look at plus 200. Uh, This is an underplay for me anyways. Seattle, once again, only 16 away goals on the season. Montreal, for all the goals that they did concede, the vast majority of them did come away from home. Um, so I think it's, the goals are going to be few and far between both teams have scored no under two and a half at plus 200. Let's go. Uh, would you like to retort anything else there, Bobby? I would just like to point out that while you're getting these numbers, um, you you could play it, you know, a little, uh, a few different games with the sports book, for example, um, in these matches, um, it is a one and in. All the other, the the next round is going to be a th- best of three. This yeah. is a one and in. So if you look at the um, in the sports book where it says blank to qualify, qualify. that counts for um, the full time plus mm-hmm. the penalties. So yep. right now, if you're looking at the Montreal pick'em, it's minus one thirty. The Montreal to qualify minus one thirty five. Um, you should not be playing a Montreal pick'em. You should be playing the Montreal to qualify because you get more results. Maybe you, you don't yeah, get for the five extra cents. Yeah. Um, for Atlanta United, their pick them is even, but their two qualify is plus 105. So if you're liking Atlanta, um, a plus 105 on a two qualify, and that covers if they win in 90 minutes or if they win in penalties. Just one of these little nuanced things that, you know, we're going to play in the next round. The two yep. qualify is going to cover three full matches, but this two qualify is going to, to just cover the one match here. So there you go. Uh, anything else? I, I'm staring down the... Draw in total under one and a half at plus thirteen hundred. <laughs> if, if that shifts out a little bit more, honestly, I, nice I, 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 I think goals, a nil goals, nil goals, is. Baby. 
I think a nil nil is possible here. I, I just you, you I, I really the script do. on the year, Gareth, with one play and you fire on that bad boy. You, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I got thirteen to one. I'll just chip away my plus two hundred. <laughs> how does that uh, how does that sound? So nice. any other live plays? Any other temptations here, guys? Or are you gonna just stick with, with with our aforementioned plays? No, I think um, I'm sticking with what I have, but I do like, uh, you know, Bob pointing out the distinctions like that's one of the big things. Like if you have questions about how the postseason format works, that's more important than, you know, these these game by game bases. You know what I mean? To ask questions about how the brackets maybe shake out, how the seating works out, um, you know, how these bets are graded, because how many times, Gareth, have you had non soccer playing or non soccer betting friends that just ask you for a pick? <laughs> they accidentally placed the wrong one and they're bitching at you. You have a winning ticket because you placed it correctly and they only placed it on the 90 minute line. So it really is yeah, important to make those distinctions and making sure um, you're placing the correct wager that covers the outcome that you actually think you're placing on good show go ahead also look around because there are um other sports yes. books that we're not going to talk about here that have atlanta united to advance at minus 105 at us plus 105 10 points yep. that 10 points through the course of the season is going to be the difference that makes yep. up your money and you can get it on bet us yep right on uh again betustv.com slash odds if you want to join do the exact same thing slash join all right so four official plays or do you just have one play or two plays bob do you have two plays i, I do i have a uh, montreal plus 152 uh and montreal team total over one and a half goals at plus 117 all right myself both teams to score no and under two and a half atlanta united plus uh, a quarter of a goal at minus 135. Like Dan said on BetUS, you can find double chance. So a, a draw no bet or a draw no bet, I should say, for Atlanta United at even money if you want to switch it up and play a little bit of a different way. But those are the bets right there. Montreal team total confirmed under Bob at uh, over one and a half at plus 117. I, I will just say this before we pivot and move on. If you're Atlanta United sitting at home, or sorry, Inter Miami sitting at home, you want to play CF Montreal. You, you don't want to play Atlanta. We saw a circus of a game at Mercedes Benz Stadium. True. It was a 2 2. It's wild. It's the turf there as well. It's a grass field up at Saputo. I just, I don't think Inter Miami wants anything to do with Atlanta United. Atlanta beat Miami 3 1 in Miami this year. It's just. That for me is a matchup I don't think they'd they'd really fancy. So I think that they'd be pulling, uh, supporting Team Bob in this one and backing CF Montreal to win this game. Uh, something very cool that's going on right now and spooky with BetUS uh, is the Halloween contest. It is the uh, let me get this wording right: trick or treat on Horror Street. Hey, sounds like my street outside. Nailed it. There are 13 days. I love it. 13 days. That's an improvement on my face, by the way. 13 days of promo dating back to August 19th all the way to the 31st, the end of the month. Bet US, Bet US will be offering daily promotions and raffles into entries to win sports or casino prize packs. Uh, they'll be giving away on October 31st. So you can enter multiple times and every $200 deposit that you make gets you one entry. Hit the link in the description for more information. we got to love Halloween and this just makes it that much better with the trick or treat on horror street promotion. What are you guys being for Halloween? Dan, do you have a costume? Uh, if I was dressing yep. up, we just got a, uh, like a wiener dog. So we would yep. probably make her go as hot dog. I would go mustard. The fiance would go ketchup. A whole family deal is, is what we were doing. But honestly, like I'll probably just wait until the day after get all the discounted can candy and just gorge myself. It's, it's probably Brilliant. the best bet for me. Bob, what about you? I got nothing in the works right now. I, I should be coming up with something. Actually, it's, it's, it's about that time. You can be Tim time. Howard. You can go as Tim Howard. Be Tim, <laughs> Tim Howard. <laughs> oh, man. I did a guest spot, and someone told me earlier this week that I look just like Tim Howard, and I'm like, bald beard. I'm just not going to. Yep. Sure. Yeah. yeah I, I see a, a slight resemblance there. Um, 
fantastic. <laughs> um, I it could not to do half the things he does in that, but it is what it is. <laughs> I'm never gonna be able to unsee it. By the way, ever gonna <laughs> be able you. to unsee it? Just put on a goalkeeper kit. You're good to go. I have a three year old, and this is like his first real Halloween. So I've got my costume ready to go. It's one of those blow up dinosaurs where I hop nice. in it. it, makes it look like I'm a rancher, like I'm on its back. Classy. Walk it along. So, yeah. So, looking forward to that next week. All right. Let's get back to the games. Why you're here. By the way, get involved in the questions. Uh, put them in the chat. Uh, we'll get to them in a few moments' time. We're still going to deal with some MLS future plays as well. And uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the BetUS TV soccer channels.